I remember a couple of months ago, you kind of joked about the validity of mock drafts and they're more for entertainment than anything else, but you're consistently pick number two to Dallas. If you go that high, what would that mean to you? And would that kind of validate your decision to go to the WNBA early? Uh, it would mean so much to me, you know, just being viewed as such a good player, um, you know, gives me just so much joy and happiness, but it also shows that it pays off to, you know, work hard every day and um, just keep grinding. So as I said, it means a lot to me. And um, I mean, the mock drafts are still mock drafts, but <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, I mean, I'm just so blessed to be able to be on number two. Okay, next let's go to Nick Krupke. Obviously, since you guys weren't able to celebrate with a championship into the season in the, in the big dance, how much will tomorrow be a celebration for the three of you together on such a grand stage and really representing Oregon basketball for all the great things you guys accomplished in your three years there? Mm -hmm. It means it's a big accomplishment for Oregon basketball. And I'm sad that I won't be able to be with Ruthie and Sab, but I know that we're all together and hard and we'll text and – I don't know. It's, it just means so much to be able to enter the draft with these two. And I'm super excited. I know they are excited. So just having this as the finish mark of our last season and the beginning point of the next step means so much. It's just finally a point where you can be like, okay, this is the new beginning. Okay, next, Jerry Thompson. Jerry, you're unmuted. Hello, Satu. Jerry Ducks Illustrated. Uh, talk to Talked to Coach Gray a few weeks ago. He said that uh, he was going to play your sister in the tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. And you knew that, right? And uh, thus, did that affect your decision a little bit, thinking you were going to get to play together, or were you going to leave either way? I'm sure you're very disappointed you didn't get to play with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I never went in with the mindset, oh, she has to play. And so I always counted for she's not going to play this year, so it wouldn't pressure neither of us so my decision wouldn't be influenced and also her decision you know to rush back in and play because that's what she did last year and she retorted but we always went step step by step and she was on a really good journey and you know maybe she would have played the last four games or not um but i know you know it's it's behind us now and i'm looking forward to her stepping on the field next year hey james crepia uh, Satu, I was talking to Kelly yesterday. He was saying that a couple of weeks ago you were just having, uh, well, there were second thoughts or just reconsidering the decision a little bit, uh, and, mm -hmm. and you hadn't signed with an agent yet at that time. Uh, can you just take me through just the, the thought process you were having at the time and uh, why ultimately you, you chose to, to stuck with your decision was professionalism and uh, an upcoming shoe deal and the prospect of being in Dallas where obviously you are now and Jalen is mm – -hmm. How much did that just weigh into this decision-making process? Um, I was really unsure about everything. I feel like the whole world was like that. You know, I didn't know what should be my next step, if it's the right decision to go pro or not due to all the circumstances. I mean, we still don't know if there will be a WNBA season. So it was kind of risky. But on the other hand, I also thought that I was ready to leave. And this is part of being a professional. And if – it's during these times and these uncertainties. I will experience them now as a professional. So I still feel ready to take the challenge and accept it as it is. But I also know, you know, I can still do some things such as working out and staying in shape, the same things that I would do as I would be in college. But I had the luxury of, you know, having an alternative decision of returning back to college. And I didn't take it because ultimately I, I'm just ready for a new step and a new challenge. So it hasn't changed too much in terms of my attitude towards readiness. Okay, next, Sam Finley. Yes, hey, Satu. Sam Finley, Eugene Magazine. Uh, you talked a little bit about uh, working out. Uh, how have you been training during this whole lockdown craziness, and what will you remember most about your time at Oregon? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been staying really in shape with yoga, um, with Chelsea Knight Yoga. Uh, she's here in Eugene, but she offers online courses. So I've been doing a bunch of them 
and there's conditioning involved. Our um, strength coach gave us workouts on bridge that we can either do with kettlebells or not. And then I've been running a lot. And, you know, basketball, you can dribble a basketball anywhere. But then a couple of times I've been able to um, visit a gym alone by myself and just work out there. But it's definitely not the same like it used to be. Um, but I think the most important thing is just staying in shape and being strong. Next, Andrew Hobner. Satu, um, you know, the way your name has kind of skyrocketed up these mock drafts, you know, you can debate validity, but I mean, when did it start to become real for you that, you know, the idea of going to the WNBA was not just going to the WNBA, it was being number two in conversation with Sabrina there right at the top of the draft. I mean, when, when did that start to sink in that, you know, you were that sought after by the WNBA? I feel like the first time it really clicked was when I sent in my papers to the WNBA office. And I really waited up until the last day I was able to do that because, you know, I was just going back and forth, back and forth. And once I submitted these papers, it hit me and I was like, oh my God, I hope I made the right decision. <laughs> and I really hope um, that I'll go into there, you know, with a little more certainty than right now. But yeah, that's when it clicked. So that was the first time for sure. Okay, next let's go to Maximilian with the German Newswire. Hey Satu, hier ist der Max. Um, ich arbeite für DPA, für die Deutsche Presseagentur. Um, was mich interessieren würde, ist, es ist in Europa ja völlig ungewöhnlich, dass man so gar keinen Einfluss darauf hat, wo man landet, in welchem Team. Wir werden hingegen das in den USA ja komplett normal ist. Wie, wie ist das für dich als Mensch, wenn man so gar keinen Einfluss darauf hat, wo man, wo man seine professionelle Karriere beginnt? Um, es ist sehr merkwürdig. Ich war vor einem halben Jahr, wusste ich wirklich nicht, wo ich sein werde. Um, und jetzt, dass die ganzen Mockdrafts draußen und dass ich jetzt ungefähr weiß, dass ich entweder auf zwei oder drei gehe, um, gibt mir das schon viel mehr Sicherheit und ich weiß nicht, auch ein bisschen Selbstbewusstsein, dass ich weiß, wo ich wahrscheinlich in einem Monat wohnen werde. Aber es ist sehr komisch, um, Teil des professionellen Lebens und um, ich meine, damit muss man leben. Ich wusste zum Beispiel auch nie, wo ich aufs College gehen werde und musste mir erstmal alles angucken. Jetzt bin ich älter, ein bisschen reifer und jetzt kann ich mir halt nicht angucken vorher. Okay, danke. Um, ich hatte dir gestern auch per Instagram eine Message geschickt mit meinen Kontaktdaten. Vielleicht kannst du okay. da mal angucken. Super. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next, let's go to Eric Scopel. Hey, Satsu. Uh, first off, if you, you haven't gotten any guarantee from Dallas about that being where you'll be selected. And, and then secondly, have you thought much about what the fit there might be with and kind of what their team looks like right now? Uh, no, no guarantee. But yes, I've definitely thought about it. Uh, I've looked at the roster and they're a really young team. And I mean, I would love to join them and just compete, um, build a new program, basically, and just, you know, do some new things. Okay, next, Brandon Cameron. Hey, Satu. Um, one thing about uh, this Oregon team that, that did so much in your time there was uh, you had an impact beyond basketball. Um, you know, I know you and Sabrina and others even touched on global issues. How important now that you're moving to the professional level is that for you as you continue to build your name to become more than just a basketball player? Mm -hmm. I will always aspire to be more than a basketball player because I feel like I've um, elevated myself so much that people listen to me. And I, I have that platform and I, in my opinion, athletes should use these platforms to make new things possible, um, to accomplish new things, but also raise awareness to certain issues that, are, that we all are facing in our communities. So I will definitely continue that, um, you know, basketball is not the only thing people will hear from me. Um, and I just want to accomplish much more than sports. Um, which is, I mean, everyone can do what they want, but to me, it's just so important to be, um, you know, attention, to pay attention to your environment and your surroundings because you're a human first, you're not an athlete first. So, yeah. Okay, Tyson Alger. 
Hey, Satu. Uh, back when like the world was different and you guys all thought you were going to have a normal draft, did, did you and your teammates ever kind of like talk or have a, like a vision together of what you thought that night would be like? And just now, like, are you guys going to be on like a, a Zoom call together or like on the phone? Like just how is it going to work for you? We definitely had a vision. I mean, Mignon and Taylor, my roommate Keely, they were ready to fly out to New York and uh, we were ready, you know, to have a good weekend there. But uh, with everything changing, that's not happening. I mean, I'm still here with my roommates. And so at least I'm together with them. But it's just going to be different that we're all not physically together. We'll, we'll have a Zoom call. We will stay virtually collected, connected. So I guess that's a good point. But our original plans obviously looked a lot different. And some of my teammates even wanted to fly out to New York, which meant so much. All right, let's go back out to Germany with Sven Stroik. Mm -hmm. Hi, can you hear me, everybody? Yeah. Hi, Satu. This is Sven Stroik from Germany. Um, I'm just going to turn into German. Um, mm -hmm. Satu, um, was wird es für dich bedeuten, wenn es tatsächlich am Ende Dallas wird? Ich meine, schließlich gab es ja da mal einen Dirk Nowitzki. Das würde so viel bedeuten. Er ist wirklich so eine Legende und äh, eine Inspiration für alle Sportler, für, vor allem für alle deutschen Sportler. Und ähm, klar, wenn ich nach Dallas kommen könnte und in seine Fußstapfen treten könnte, da er jetzt nicht mehr spielt, äh, wäre das alles für mich. Und ich glaube, wirklich ein riesiger... Ähm, eine riesige Inspiration für Deutschland auch, ähm, dass jetzt, ich meine, mit Maxi Kleber, der ist ja auch da, dass dann sozusagen drei Deutsche dort auch waren. Ähm, vorher haben ja auch Deutsche dort gespielt. Das wäre super. Das wäre so wie das deutsche Team in Amerika. Ja, danke. Und würde es die Sache eher leichter machen oder schwerer sogar für dich? Ähm, ich nehme es immer auf die leichte Schulter. Also klar, nicht mit Arroganz, aber ich sehe es einfach nur als Inspiration. Ich bin eigentlich die erste Frau, die nach Dallas geht. Dann kann ich es immer auf die Sache schieben, <lacht> wenn ich was falsch mache. Aber äh, ich sehe es mehr als Inspiration, als irgendeine you know, weiße Würde. Ja, yeah, danke dir. Danke. Okay, next, let's go to Erika Ayala. Es <lacht> Yara. <lacht> Sorry. That's okay, no problem. <lacht> I wanted to ask, you spoke earlier about some of the uncertainty that obviously everyone is experiencing, but uh, particularly in your situation, um, opting to leave school early. Have you thought any into the future about perhaps contingency plans if the WNBA season is more delayed than originally anticipated or does it commence at all this year? Um, I would start, I mean, if really nothing happens, I would even start studying for my uh, law test that I have to take before going to law school um, just to keep myself busy. But I also feel like there's so um, many more things that I, I could deal with um, other than school. I mean, I'm going to graduate. I have a mi major and a minor after this summer, and I'm going to be taking online classes till about July. So I'll be busy until then. But after that, um, I'll probably take a little break from school and then if there's still no sports, I mean, I'm just going to start studying for law school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, Ashley Young. Hey, Satu. Love the Hi. shirt. Um, Thank you. I know, I know how close you are with your family. I'm just wondering what tomorrow night will look like for you and for them and um, seeing, you know, having them see their daughter's dream come true. Yeah, they're all so proud and excited already. I've got so many texts and, um, you know, just DMs from my family the whole time. They're like, when is it going? Uh, how can we watch it? You know, sometimes it's hard to access uh, ESPN overseas, but I hope this time it's going to be possible. So they're all going to tune in. I'm also going to have my family directly there with me on a Zoom call. So in case it doesn't work out, they'll be there. They're just super excited and can't wait. Uh, I mean, it's going to be 1 a.m. in the morning there or at night, however you want to see it, and they're all going to watch. So I'm, I'm happy about that. They'll be there in spirit. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. OK, looks like we've got everybody. So we'll start hitting people again. If you have another one, send me another message. Let's go back to Jerry Thompson. So to you mentioned that you have issues that you're interested in other than basketball. Can you name just one that's uh, nearest and dearest to you that you might want to briefly suggest? Or mm -hmm. 
Um, I would definitely say civil rights of Black and African American people. Um, and I would also include immigration um, policies and problems more in Europe, but also in America. Okay, and next, Jackie Powell. Hey, Satu, thank you so much for doing this. And mm -hmm. I love what you've said about being, being a human first. Um, but I wanted to ask you about one of your teammates who people yeah. aren't talking about as much, but she could be drafted too, and that's Mignon Moore. So yes. how, how lucky would a WNBA team to potentially have her in a training camp and maybe on their roster? They would have a generous soul and the hardest fighter I've ever seen. She came into practice ready every time. She was a vocal leader. She, every time when she had her present, it just converted to our team. And it was, it was amazing to have her. And she even texted me today and um, was just expressing her love and appreciation. And I was like, man, that's like, that's mignon. So if people really have the chance to draft her, I definitely would advocate for that because she she's just such a presence in a team that makes people want to do more. Thank you. Go back to Sam Finley. Yes, yeah, so sad too. I mean, obviously tomorrow, big day with the draft, moving on to the next place. But what will you miss most about uh, your time in Eugene and just uh, what these last few years at Oregon has meant to you and just the impact in general you've had? on this program? I will miss my teammates, my coaches, and really the fans. The fans have been awesome. I've never played in an environment like that. They showed so much love for women's basketball. Uh, on the street, they say hi, we take pictures. It, it has been just such a community and family atmosphere here in Eugene. And one thing I'm gonna miss for sure is waking up, just crossing the street and being in the arena. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we got time for two more. Let's go to Andrew Hopner. Not to notice yesterday um, that you guys had all signed with your respective agencies. Um, mm -hmm. Did you and Ruthie talk at all about signing with Wasserman together, or did that just kind of happen naturally? Uh, we were always, you know, talking about our agents and just exchanging ideas, what we thought of other agents, what we thought of Wasserman. And with Wasserman, I feel like it just showed that they really care and that they want to represent you the best possible. They had great plans for both of us. And I think it just shows that uh, Ruthie and I also click and it just shows that she has the same interests as I have. And it was cool to see. I mean, in the end we were like, okay, I mean, who are you going to sign with? And she was like, yeah, I wasn't. And I was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> Can I ask a follow up, Nate or no? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So just real quick on that note, I mean, what was it about the presentations that, that wowed you guys so much? Was it about the off-court stuff, the endorsements that they said you could receive? Was it on-court marketability? I mean, what drew you guys to them so much? Well, personally, and I know Ruthie has expressed that too, it was more the human side about them. Um, you know, just the kind of conversations you could have when you were just sitting at the table and just chatting uh, with Lindsay, more for me. And I mean, Adam and Serena are also super representatives in Europe. Uh, I was able to meet Adam in Croatia when I played there. And it was, it was really cool to just, you know, talk to them. So I feel like you just had a really comfortable feeling because your agent will be, you know, with you, hopefully your whole career. And you just want to make a good human choice as well. Okay, Erica. Hey, Satu, um, thank you again for this. I did want to ask, I've been asking everyone about the, you know, draft night drip. Uh, we won't have a carpet <laughs> here in New York for you, but uh, very um, eager to hear what your plans are. And <laughs> from a technical perspective, uh, you know, what that night will look like, what has been sent to you technology-wise uh, to get you prepared to, to be ready for the draft. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, I'm going to start with the technology. So we got a, a tech, tech kit from ESPN and they really provided us with a bunch of things. Um, and I will have a rehearsal today. So later on today, so I can't really say how it's going to look yet because I don't really know yet, but uh, I hope it's going to be fun. Um, they really prepared everything well and informed us with a bunch of emails. So I feel prepared in that. And then my outfit will be from Cthulhu mixed with, you know, it's like an African fashion brand here in America. I'm actually wearing a shirt from them right now. Um, and they're really amazing. We've worked on an outfit. Uh, it's going to be sport chic um, with, you know, African imprints. So I'm really excited. I love it. For the culture. <laughs> Thank you. For the culture, for sure. <laughs> All right. Last one. Let's finish up back in Germany with Maximilian. Ja, vielen Dank. Thanks. Um, Satur, es gibt außerdem noch zwei weitere aus Deutschland, die im mm -hmm. Draft dabei sind. Was sagt das denn aus über die Stärke des deutschen Basketballs und welche, mm -hmm. welche Wirkung kann das vielleicht auch haben für die Aufmerksamkeit der Sportler in Deutschland? Ja, yeah. uh, Luisa und Leonie sind wirklich super Spielerinnen. Uh, ich konnte selbst mit denen noch nicht spielen. Ich glaube, mit Luisa habe ich gespielt. Um, und die sind wirklich eine richtig große Zukunft für den deutschen Basketball. Und ich freue mich, dass sie ihren Namen reingeworfen haben und dass sie den großen Schritt wagen. Das ist super. Ich hoffe, dass sie auf jeden Fall gedraftet werden. Ich meine, Luisa ist irgendwie auch, hat auch eine Prognose, nach Dallas zu gehen. Das wäre super. Und Leonie, die halt wirklich nicht den Schritt erstmal nach Amerika tut, aufs College und auch Luisa, das zeigt einfach, wie die Zukunft des deutschen Basketballs nicht nur von Amerika abhängig ist und dass man auch den Schritt über Europa gehen kann. Und ich denke, das ist wichtig, dass andere Leute in Deutschland sehen, dass man ähm, raus aus Deutschland wahrscheinlich auch muss, wenn man wirklich groß sein will, wenn man in den großen Ligen mitspielen kann, will und auch soll. Ähm, aber ja, das ist ein super Schritt von Ihnen und ich bin so stolz auf die. Dankeschön. Mhm.